On the heels of a New York Times article accusing Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Ronan Farrow of not checking facts and sources when reporting on stories like rape allegations against Matt Lauer. Lauer himself wrote an op-ed saying he reached out to the sources he says Farrow never did, and they didn't back up Farrow's reporting. Sonny, what do you think of these allegations? Well, one, I was really surprised that Mediaite would actually publish this, this op-ed. Uh, you know, bottom line is that Ronan Farrow is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, and Matt Lauer at this point um, is a disgraced journalist who's been credibly accused of rape. And I thought it was really, um, for lack of a better word, just rich that, that Matt Lauer is interviewing the ex-boyfriend of the woman who credibly accused him of rape and is calling it journalism and investigative journalism at, at that. So um, clearly, you know, Matt Lauer has an ax to grind and I suppose he wants to either, you know, get his reputation back or get his job back. But in this investigative journalism op-ed piece, he basically outlines more than one relationship where the at work that he had that uh, consensual or otherwise, he claims they were consensual, where the power dynamic was imbalanced in his favor. Um, and so he didn't do himself any favors by trying to attack Ronan Farrow, who by all accounts is a fantastic journalist. I, I just didn't understand where he was coming from on this. Megan, what's your take on the allegations against Ronan? Well, I, I too was as surprised as Sonny that anyone would uh, print anything by Matt Rape Button in his office, Matt Lauer. I don't care anything what that guy has to say. He's been um, accused credibly numerous times of sexual assault against numerous women. Ronan Farrow, as Sonny pointed out, is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. He's also someone that I can, I hope, I, when I speak for this show and for a lot of women that I know in this industry, he has made our job safer. I now know that in this industry that a executive at any company can't come to me and say, hey, Megan, if you want a job, you have to do X sexually. That's not the kind of thing that's going to fly when you have someone like Ronan Farrow around. The New York Times article that was written about him honestly just made me think, what does Ronan Farrow know about someone at the New York Times? Why is someone like Ben Smith so threatened by a journalist like Matt Rat Lauer? And I read the article several times, and I just think the timing of this is very fishy. I mean, we're in the middle of a huge global pandemic. I want to know what article Ronan Farrow was working on that seems to be threatening so many people in media. Joy, you think there are bigger issues that need to be dealt with here? Well, I mean, I don't know what to say about this because it worries me that, uh, you know, a Pulitzer Prize winner does his investigation, it's thorough, and then all of a sudden somebody comes out of the, out of the woodwork and, say, and starts to question it. I mean, uh, Trump, uh, in my opinion, could use something like this and say, you see, it's fake news, uh, no one's to believe it. On the other hand, there's some, another issue that I would like, like if we're in the middle of this Tara Reid uh, accusing Biden of sexual assault. Are we supposed to believe her just because she's a woman? To me, if you say, I believe any woman who makes any accusation, uh, if you say that, I think it minimizes our credibility as women. And, and then nobody's going to believe anybody at some point. So these things have to be thoroughly investigated, thoroughly vetted. I, I would like to have all 24 of the women who are accusing Trump of sexual assault be vetted and let's hear from them also. Let us hear from, we heard from Tara, let's hear from them. We heard from Matt now, let's hear from the woman again. I mean, everybody has to have a voice in this. Um, I, I mean, I, I feel as though it can be used as a political cudgel against a political rival. And that I think is dangerous. Kind of like with Brett Kavanaugh. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I mean, well, it's interesting it was, to hear a lot of women it, say, I believe all women, and then it, we're singing an entirely different tune after Brett Kavanaugh. But I actually don't think that's the point. I think the point is, is that people are going after <laughs> Ronan Farrow and his reporting, as Sonny pointed out, he's a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. They don't just hand those things out to anybody. And the idea that he's somehow hurting the industry or hurting journalism, the New York Times has a lot of things to answer for in a lot of ways. But I just think it's Megan, interesting that we believe all women now, and we didn't believe uh, it's an entirely different tune that was being sung earlier this year in the Brett Kavanaugh hearings. 
all I'm all I'm saying so I'm, all I'm, I'm saying I'm, is you don't you don't uh, or ipso facto believe somebody just because they I don't. Make an I'm not a believe all woman be person. I never have been. I'm very and investigated. I, I'm very consistent and, and on I this. I don't that believe that the Kavanaugh women. thing was investigated. Well, all right. I think what's I interesting is is I I would I would want Ronan to say actually I did call this guy or I did I think some of the questions are interesting and I think the ball really now is in Ronan's court when people start making those kind of questions public you just come out and say well here's what I what I did and then that that sort of takes care of it so that I think is all that needs to happen. If Ronan did everything he was supposed to do, that's all he has to say. I did that, and here's where I did it. Because if it's that easy for somebody to come and question it like that, that's not a good thing. So I think that it is now an important. Anywho, go ahead, Sonny. Yeah, uh, well, I, I, no, I, I just want to say, I know that we, I, I, I know that we have this legal note, and I'm going to read it, but Matt Lauer denies the, the rape charges. And, and both he and Neville said they had a subsequent consensual relationship. Both Ronan Farrow and Brooke Neville's responded on Twitter to Matt Lauer's accusations. Uh, I, Farrow tweeted, all I'll say on this is that Matt Lauer is just wrong. Catch and Kill was thoroughly reported and fact-checked, including with Matt Lauer himself. Brooke Nevels tweeted the acronym DARVO and spelled it out, deny, attack, reverse, victim, and offender. Um, can I just say this um, in terms of, you know, we have to believe all women. I think the point is that women should be heard when it comes to being victimized. Yes. I spent a lot of my career yes. being uh, a sex crimes prosecutor, and the bottom line is women have to to be heard. They have that right. And the problem with sexual assault is in this country is that women feel that they are not going to be heard, that they are not going to be believed. And that is why rape continues to be the most underreported crime oh in this country. And when it comes to Brett, Ka Brett Kavanaugh, Dr. Ford testified. Right. She testified and was able to tell her side of the story. And her claims were not thoroughly investigated by the FBI because Congress shut her investigation down and didn't give her investigation right. the breadth and the depth that it deserved. That is the bottom line there. So no one, I don't think, on this show is saying oh. that women should not be heard. <coughs> No, I know. I'm not no, saying no one is saying women should not be heard. Absolutely yeah. not. Okay, good. 